Well, welcome to DTLT Today. Again, I am Tim Owens here by myself. It's, it's ridiculous. Apparently, uh, I am a team of one at this point. Uh, you had to deal with me yesterday, and you're going to have to deal with me again today. Andy's birthday is today, so he's off. Martha's off in Pennsylvania. And as far as I know, Jim was eaten by a shark. So what can I say? Uh, I believe the team should be back next week, but who knows? You may be stuck with me. Uh, I'd, I hope for your sake that that's not the case. Uh, but anyway, today I thought as what we would do is just a little recap of some of the tech news. There have been a lot of crazy technology-related things happening this week. And in some ways, uh, some of them affect educators. So it's, I think, good for us to take a look at some of that news. If you don't follow uh, the tech gadget type blogs and things like that as much as I do, then you may let this stuff pass you by, but it's important things. So um, let's talk about it. The first one that I want to talk about is Google buying Motorola Mobility. So Google bought Motorola. Now, not the entire company because Motorola is huge and they've got several different, um, several different, I guess you would call them like silos, uh, but they brought Motorola Mobility. And what that is, is that's their entire cell phone sector along with their set-top boxes, their cable boxes. Um, so they bought it for $12.5 in cash, uh, which is a lot of money. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, that's basically about two years' worth of Google's revenue uh, from ads and everything that they make money from. That's two years' worth of their revenue that they're relying on. So they bought Motorola Mobility. They interesting thing about it is, I, I mean, I guess they're very confident that this deal is going to go through because there's a $2.5 billion breakup fee. If this doesn't go through, Motorola still gets $2.5 billion. And that's awesome for Motorola because they were not profitable. They actually have posted losses in the last quarter and they've not been making money for a while now. So uh, for them to be able to sell for $12.5 billion is a good deal. Uh, but you know, you've got to wonder what's in it for Google, right? So the um, first thing that people think is the patents. They um, Google recently made news uh, for uh, about five weeks ago for not being able to buy the Nortel patents. The Nortel was selling off a whole bunch of patents, and Google was in bids with them. And I don't even know that uh, they were. I think they were very interested in them, but at the same time, uh, they didn't get them, and they made a big stink about it on their blog. Uh, patents are more and more becoming an important thing in the technology sector, and they're going for a lot of money. It's not a great thing. Uh, but anyway, Google wasn't able to buy the Nortel patents. Apple and Microsoft teamed up together and paid $4 billion for them. Uh, so Google was really hurt by this because they need patents in order to protect Android. It's a big problem for them because they want to be able to license out Android uh, for free to all these different handset makers. But if there's patent trouble, nobody wants their OS and uh, because they don't want to come under litigation for it. So they needed patents. This Motorola deal might give it to them. Uh, apparently, there's over 13,000 patents, both filed and in the works, uh, that Motorola owns. So it may be that... Google sees this just as a patent deal, but at the same time, $12.5 billion, that's three times what Microsoft and Apple paid together for the Nortel patents. So that's still a lot of money. So you've got to wonder, as educators, uh, what what we can expect from this deal. Is there anything that we can't expect? Can we uh, see better handsets from for Android? It's possible. Uh, I have a Motorola Droid, and I still think that the Droid is one of the more successful marketing campaigns. Um, yeah, exactly. Jason Green mentioned on the um, chat about the capacity to make handsets. Yeah, I, I think that this deal is going to be a good thing if they decide to get into more deeply with the handset makers, with Motorola in that regard. The question is there's a hard balance for them because there's already several handset manufacturers like HTC and Samsung that are partners with Google. And so Google is carrying this fine balance where they're sort of like, uh, we're going to treat Motorola just the same as we treat you. Don't worry about that. But at the same time, you know, all of us are th are thinking, please don't. Please give Motorola preferential treatment. Please give them early access to the betas and to the software. We want that kind of better software support. And when you've got this whole picture similar to like what Apple does, where you've got the software and the hardware working together, then that's a win for the consumers. So, uh, you know, it's interesting. It, 
you know, Motorola made the Zoom. That wasn't a very popular tablet, so it may be that we see better tablets out of this too. And I would, for one, really enjoy that uh, because the iPad is just sort of standing alone there. It's the only option right now for people. You know, it just seems like they're dropping like flies, right? Um, and so it was interesting. It was interesting to see what the carrier's response to it was. I think uh, John Gruber from Daring Fireball said that it was the Stepford handset makers because they post on their uh, website all the response to the different handset makers and they're all like uh, we we are very confident that Google will move forward we welcome uh, we welcome this response to from Google and I mean it was like the exact same lines from all of them and it was just you know no <laughs> You, you've got to think that they're thinking, oh, geez, I, I don't know about this. Or maybe they're already making plans for what they're going to do in a post-Android handset market. So it's going to be very interesting. Uh, you know, Android is very important for us in education because their competition is important for consumers. It's not just about education. It's about us consumers and having alternative options. And f speaking as someone who's used Android for a year and a half now, I'd, it's not where iOS is for certain people, certainly not for me. And I would like to see them get a little bit better, both in terms of the hardware that it's using and the OS. So if this deal ends up being a win in that regard, then I say great. Speaking of acquisitions, uh, Skitch, a very popular screenshot application for the Mac, was acquired by Evernote. Uh, Evernote, as you know, possibly, is a note-taking application. It's on the web, it's on iOS, it's on Android, it's everywhere. And <laughs> uh, Mac, Windows, you can download these applications, and Evernote will sync up all of your notes, all of your pictures that you put on it. It's similar to Dropbox, but it's also very different because Evernote actually archives all of that information. When you take a picture, if there's any text on the picture, it will scan that in and archive that as well so you can search against that text. And Skitch was a very popular screenshot application for the Mac. It actually cost $20 in the Mac App Store. Well, Evernote acquired them, and I think you know all the geeks and nerds out there were saying, this is awesome because it's so cool when two great companies come together and say, we're finally going to get to work together. So Evernote buys them. Immediately, the Skitch application becomes free. That's the great thing about this acquisition, I think, is that it wasn't Evernote bought Skitch and shut it down. You know, I hear about that so much with Facebook, where Facebook bought this product, so it's no longer available. Facebook bought this company, they're buying it as a talent acquisition, and now you can't use that software. Well, that's not the case with this. Skitch is now free in the Mac App Store. They also released an Android application yesterday uh, as part of that news, which is awesome. They, Skitch didn't have anything in the mobile space at that time. Uh, so, I mean, this is a win for both sides. On the Skitch side, they're going to um, be able to push into the mobile space. On Evernote's side, they're going to get more intricate annotation abilities into the Evernote software. So, it, I mean, it's going to be a win-win for everyone. Now, one thing I was going to mention that is if you haven't already checked it out, a great way to support these people and a great way to use that software since Skitch is free now is to go on there and get Evernote Premium. It's actually, I looked on there and it's really cheap. It's $5 a month. So 40, 45 bucks a year if you buy in advance. And, you know, with a premium Evernote subscription, you get a whole lot more upload capability. I think it's a gig a month that you can upload to them. Um, they don't track total size, so you can upload as much as you want over the course of your membership, but it's only on certain uh, per month basis. Uh, so, you know, I would check that out definitely if I were you and then look for those mobile apps that are coming out now. Um, another thing that we should mention when we're speaking of mobile, when we're speaking of uh, Google, Android, and Motorola and all of them is Hewlett Packard. Uh, oh, and going back to Evernote real quick, Jason, you mentioned 5 times 12 is 60. Yes, it's 45 a year if you buy in advance. So yeah, it is the annual discount, $45 for one year, or if you're paying month to month, it's $5 a month. Um, Hewlett Packard, killing WebOS. So this news came out yesterday, and I mean, if you could have sent any more shock to the tech sector after the Google Motorola deal on Monday, this was it. Uh, everybody has been championing WebOS as an alternative to Android. And, okay, so back up real quick. HP bought Palm. 
uh, bought, you know, Palm Pre. They had this uh, operating system that came out that was called the Web OS. HP bought them, and everybody got really excited because this meant that HP could possibly bring Web OS to laptops, to tablets, to mobile devices, and that's exactly what they said that they would do. And so then we start seeing these devices just now coming out. The touchpad is 49 days old. 49 days. And in that time period, apparently sales have been dismal. And so HP got on their sales call yesterday and basically said, we're discontinuing WebOS, not just the hardware. We're not just going to stop selling touchpad. They're going to do that too. Touchpad after 49 days is dead in the water. You're not going to be able to uh, buy a brand new one from them anymore. It'll just be in retail chains, maybe. I don't know what the deal is with that. But they're not going to sell touchpad anymore. They're discontinuing WebOS. Um, now the question is, uh, HP then came back and said, well, we're not discontinuing it. Our plan is to figure out what we want to do with it. We don't want to focus it on anymore. So they've thought about licensing deals, like if other handset makers wanted to buy WebOS, which, you know, maybe they would if if they've decided that maybe Android isn't the way to go, but I, I don't see that happening, to be quite honest with you. I mean, you're talking about an operating system that didn't take off. I, how many Palm Pre owners do you know? How many touchpad owners do you know? This is an operating system that hasn't proven itself out in the field in the same way that Android did, and Android's free, or, you know, free, minus the, you know, patent lawsuits. Uh, so, you know, I don't see them getting much in terms of a license deal. You know, they could sell it for their patent portfolio, going back to patents um, you know I don't know what Palm had in terms of patent licenses and things like that uh, but it may be possible that that could be something that they could sell for quite a bit of money it seems the market for patents these days uh, could net them quite a bit of money they paid 1.2 billion dollars for Palm so certainly their shareholders are probably thinking today as their stock is tanking what did we pay for Palm for if just a few years later you turn around and say that you're not going to be using WebOS and you, you know, you're discontinuing the hardware that was running it. So uh, it's interesting. Uh, it, it'll be interesting to keep an eye out. Uh, you know, as an educator, I keep on saying we want these new types of tablets and these new operating systems and touchpad was particularly interesting because WebOS was like the one operating system that actually made a lot of sense. It was actually a really decent operating system. Now, that being said, it really didn't prove itself in the market, so I don't know what to say about it. Uh, whether they're going to be able to license it out, whether someone's going to buy it outright and use it, and whether that will turn out to be something in the form of a tablet or a handset that people can actually buy in the real market, I don't know. But it'll be interesting to watch. The last piece of news I got for you is just a really short one, Chegg.com. Chegg.com is very popular for textbook rentals. They've announced that they're going to start getting into digital textbooks. So they're going to be doing HTML5 digital textbooks um, that run on their website, that run on applications, I assume. Uh, the great thing about this is that they've got partnerships with four out of the five higher education textbook manufacturers, and that's huge. So... Um, you know, I, I remember when the iPad came out and I thought, man, if I was a student going into it, that would be a no brainer for me because the ebooks are so much cheaper than regular books. Well, with textbooks, that's not really the case. They were barely even an available. Uh, in a digital form. So uh, it's exciting to see the textbook rental market turn towards digital like that. Textbook rental has become very popular in recent years. Uh, it used to be that you had to buy your books outright for a lot of money and then try and sell them back and hope that uh, you could sell it to someone who needed it. And these days it ends up being cheaper to just rent the books. Uh, so this is a another thing where I think uh, this mobile environment that we have is pushing companies like this to start thinking about how they're going to deal with in the mobile space. So that's the basic tech news for this week. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for joining in on the chat. Uh, I think Jason was the only one this week. Uh, but anyway, next week, hopefully, my team's going to be back and you'll have to stop listening to my voice and start uh, getting used to the rest of us arguing down here on the couch again. Uh, but thanks for watching. And uh, this has been DTLT Today. Take care, guys.
Thank you.